Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sporting Directions, proudly sponsored by Tsunami Teamwear, with me, Gavin Taylor. And myself, Tavis Roberts. For those of you new to the show, the Sporting Direction podcast is aimed to provide some ideas and guidance for those of you wanting to pursue a career in the world of sport. Over the course of this first series, we've been interviewing a range of professionals from different areas of sport to share their amazing stories. We're having them share with us their achievements, their struggles, and any advice for you guys out there wanting to pursue a career in sport. Today, we're really happy to welcome Gareth Morris with us. Now, Gareth Morris has worked in several areas within sport. He's been a youth sports worker, he's been a sports lecturer, and he's been involved in teaching. However, Gareth's main passion comes from being a sports nutritionist. Welcome, Gareth. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's just it's great to have an opportunity to talk about the story of how to get into sports nutrition and the different avenues that sort of led me there. So it's good. Thanks to talk so much about for coming it. on, Gareth. Really excited to hear your story, buddy. Thank you so much. Um, we'll get started then. So, kind of a, a two prong question for you, Gareth. The first is. What was the strongest memory for you that kind of led you into this path into a career of sport? And as well, just, just for those listeners out there that are not quite sure, what exactly is a sports nutritionist? For, for me, it came from sports being my favourite subject at school. I'm not really the most academic uh, individual. Uh, I found that I had a passion for sports and playing, whether that was football and rugby being the main sports that I got into. And I sort of got driven by that by my PE teachers at school and I found that the things that I enjoyed the most I had the most interest in and got involved in the most and then sort of pushed myself to try loads of different things so I started out playing rugby and then sort of my friends got involved in football played a bit of lacrosse when I went to university so the passion for trying new things I think it was more of a passion for trying new things and different things within the realm of sport that what I was more interested in um, and that sort of drove me to try loads of different things in in sports as a, as a career and that led me to finding the passion of being a, a nutritionist as a whole anyway so I think one of the biggest things that I found for me was trial and error most of the time so trying things and and following where your interests go and what things that you enjoy the most and a sports nutritionist uh it can sort of, it's, there's a massive realm of what different sports nutritionists do so you can work for sort of professional the professional side where you work for clubs whether it's a football club a rugby club netball club any sort of way which is based around sort of the 1%, so increasing that 1% performance or recovery uh, in the realms of food for those athletes. Or you can go down the way of nutritionists that work with supplements, whether that's getting the, the right supplements and the, the context of those supplements in different foods. At the moment in, in the world, there's a massive obesity crisis in certain parts of the world. So there's, there's certain foods, companies that are trying to drive healthier choices, whether that's Huel or um, brands like that, like My Protein have got loads of stuff. Um, and there's, there's that sort of avenue. And it's working with individuals if you put it as a, a blank context, it's working with individuals how to increase their health and intake of food to benefit them, to make them more optimal and, and healthier, really. Thanks, Gareth. It's really interesting to hear you talk about uh, how you followed your passion. And you started off in sports and that through trial and error has led you to where you are. But if I was to compare my sort of experience with yours, I used to come home and uh, open up a packet of instant noodles and that was my afternoon snack. I wonder if you had a, a similar experience and or what age or what time did you start realizing that nutrition is actually important and what is important is what you put in your body. So I was wondering if you could comment on what age and what level did you sort of realize that nutrition was uh, a direction you wanted to go down? When I went to university, um... I think like a lot of people, I put on huge amounts of weight, which for a sports individual, it probably wasn't the nicest of experiences. And I, I got to a position where I was near 115 kilograms. Um, I'm six foot, so that's 
quite a lot and I'm aware that it, it definitely wasn't a lot of muscle mass in terms of weight wise um and after graduating I got I, lo I love food 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 my passion comes from food more than anything I love eating it love trying new cuisines different areas in the world and uh I think from having a huge weight loss uh, experience and having like loving the gym and going down that route I found that I was still craving foods that I love that you would say well, are bad foods, but it's trying to recreate those foods and meals that you really enjoy, but making them a bit healthier and actually giving them as a viable option for different people that can still enjoy them and not have that adverse effect of putting on body fat along the way. <laughs> It sounds like uh, a sports nutritionist, and correct me if I'm wrong, is about having healthy choices on what you put into your body. And so would you agree with the sort of term, you can't outrun a bad uh, diet, especially coming from your background uh, as a overweight uh, university student? 100%. Um, it's... In terms of weight loss, it's all about uh, that balance of calories in versus calorie out to make either a surplus or a deficit uh, with whichever way you want to go, whether you want to put on muscle mass or lose body fat. But um, the biggest thing in terms of health and if you want to go down those routes is adverse, uh, being, uh, what's the right word, just sticking to it. If you can't stick to a diet or stick to a, a healthy plan of what you want to eat, then it's not the right one for you. And I think people lose the idea of their own nutrition being personalized. They look at loads of people, they look at loads of adverts on TV and they think I need to be eating this. I need to have, whether it's keto or I need to cut out carbs, I need to eat those sorts of things. Whereas we all have different palates. So we need to find, and it goes through trial and error, you need to find things that you want to eat that's going to keep you sticking to things so you can get to the goal that you have. That's uh, pretty interesting. Do you think when you were in university, the inspiration to sort of change your diet, to find your consistency was hitting that sort of stage of being overweight or um, what inspired you to sort of move on? My sort of inspiration to move on from being overweight to getting into a better like physical shape, I mean, that came from more of a, a, a personal, the people that I met through my university had a big impact on me and were like, right, you need to, a lot of friends actually, like, you need to lose weight, you need to do this. But that come from a good place in their heart, the way they did that. Um, and then I think you get to a position when you get a bit older, you realise that, the things that you do put in your body and the way that you look, everyone's body image wise, they all think I want to look a certain way. And, and internally as well, like confidence and self-esteem, you want to feel good, you want to look good. So I think everyone gets to a certain age where they like something needs to change and I don't feel about good about this and you need to do something about it. Uh, that could be not just body weight wise, say if you're, have like high levels of like anxiety towards certain things or you're not confident in a certain area. I think you've just got to assess and, and look at that and think what, what is going to push that forward to making me be less, be more confident or better for me and just sort of go that path to, to figure it out. Okay, Gareth, I mean, I was just saying here, I've, I've written loads of notes, really interested in that, a really, really powerful story there about making sure you get balance, talking about how you're a foodie, but you've tried to make sure that, you know, you've used your own um, experiences of, listen, you know, I felt like what it was like to be unhealthy. I wanted to try and recover from my own personal experience. And that obviously then potentially helps you in your career, because when you're talking to people about how to become healthy, you, you had that experience too. You went from, like you said yourself, being quite, you know, overweight in your, in your frame to now being a really healthy guy. And you obviously can, explain that to, to the people that you're working with so if i was somebody listening to this pro a podcast or, or on youtube and i was like wow this story sounds great i'd love to be able to do that make a difference to somebody support them in their growth uh, and development of that H how would they do it so how did you become 
a sports nutritionist in terms of a career then? How, how did you get there? My journey towards nutrition is I became a PT. Um, so I did like my level three personal training qualification, which, which has a module within that about nutrition. Um, I then went on to, to teach that within being a lecturer and then to, to sort of diversify and go further into being a sports nutritionist, I went and did a post, sorry, my undergraduate degrees in sports performance. So that was around performing in, in like an elite sports sector, uh, that, that sector. Um, and then I went even further down nutrition with a postgraduate degree in uh, performance nutrition, which I did with the Institute of Performance Nutrition, IOPN. You can you can have a Google of that. Great course, um, and it it's all it was all online. The lectures and the readings and everything that, that that helped me put that into how to not just learning about how to be a performance nutritionist, but how to actually apply it to the real world. Which I think a lot of degrees and a lot of educational stuff don't think about how how to actually get it from sort of a theory-based stuff and evidence and put it into working with individuals so they, they did that and I think that was amazing and then once you've got your postgraduate or you can also go down the route of doing your undergraduate's degree in in sports nutrition if you want to get into it a bit earlier um, after that you you want to get a uh, registered and there's there's various different bodies that you can get registered with um i'm registered as a senr which is a sports and exercise nutrition register which is with the bda which is the british dietic association and they put you on a register which is thousands of people and they can uh people a bit like clients or whatever can can look through your database of focus that they have whether it's fat loss or performance and things like supplementation and things like that there's the association of nutrition which is more of a general population nutritionist side which is all you have to fill out like an application form uh, where your expertise are give evidence and proof of your knowledge around things um, and that proof and evidence isn't just oh, I've got a degree in this, this is my certificate. It's how long have you been doing it? What job roles and application of that knowledge have you been doing? And have you been doing that professional development to be licensed per se? And they, they re-register and do that every three, three or four years. So you have to go through that process again, which is, I think is great because you, you're forever learning in sports industries, whether that's around personal stuff around individuals uh, working with those different people and the barriers that they face or you getting a better understanding of the theory behind certain uh, nutrients or things that come out I mean one of the biggest uh, research based product in in performance and stuff is creatine but there's loads of other different things that haven't had that such wide research in that is always progressing so I think you've you've always got to be reading and learning and applying that to to figure out what what works best for you, and that that's pretty much how to be a, a sports nutritionist. And it's it, it's different. And I think each nutritionist goes down the same sort of mental which which area of nutrition do you want to apply it? Do you want to go down performance with elite athletes? Do you want to work with general population? Do you want to work uh, with obesity obesity management do you want to go that next step and be a, di a dietitian which you can be an nhs dietitian and work with different people like that uh, and i think you you make your own mind up with your passions so my passion came from sport and i think i'm definitely going down the route of performance-based uh, side of things but uh, within nutrition i think there's a big especially for, for young people and people that are probably going to watch this and think, which, what is it? What, what area do I go down? A dietitian and a nutritionist are two different things. And a dietitian, the route to get there is quite a bit longer because if you put it into a comparison, like a, a physiotherapist will have 
a different route which is longer compared to say a sports re rehabilitationist even though they're in the same field the the physiotherapist will be someone that's got more specific sort of areas that they look into and I think the longer you're in it the more specific you you have to get I think it's fascinating and and Gav I didn't realize this at all I didn't realize that you could go down so many different pathways you know you just said yourself, you, nutritionist in terms of, you know, general population, sports performance, dietitians, creatine focus. You talked about research in different areas. I mean, fascinating because, like you said, not only if you're just not looking at one career path, you're looking at a, an umbrella that then can filter down into a number of different directions based around your own passions and, and things like that. And I, I said, I didn't realize there was so many, many, many paths and many directions you can go. So. Just uh, out of interest then, certainly again, me, just prying a little bit of, of how you've been doing and, and things. Have you got, you said that when you were on the register, you know, every two or three years they make you re-register and you have to talk a bit about your experiences and, and what you've done in terms of upskilling and research and things like that. Um, have you got an example of someone that you've worked with? Yeah, you know, I really felt that I helped change this person's life for the better in terms of this balance of healthy and, and exercise and whatever. So someone that I feel like I've had a, a huge impact on. So before, as I was starting out to be like getting a passion into being a nutritionist, I worked as a sports lecturer um, for a college, inner city college in London. Um, and I, had, I was lecturing on sports science and a lot of the students there were probably in a position where a lot of the listeners will be in where they're in sport, but there's such a generalised scope of sports and what to do. Um, and the modules in the courses are so different. They're like, what, what do I actually enjoy? And I think certainly the courses that we were doing, they were delivering the theory based of it, but they're not giving an idea of what actually doing the job would be like. One of the, the students there, a couple of them, I, I found a, I have a huge passion for nutrition. And I think that rubbed off on them that they found that I went so in depth with nutrition on them, their education to, to do their modules that they were like, oh, I love this. I want to, I want to pursue this. And so we've got into conversations about how they can do that. And three of them are now at Liverpool John Moores University uh, studying sports nutrition at university. And uh, for one of the, the boys who's had some troubles in, in, in London, it's uh, quite a harsh place to live in, in certain areas. And he, He's gone to university and got out of a lifestyle that he wasn't so so much enjoying or wasn't good for him, and he's he's thriving, flourishing in in his environment over there in in Liverpool in a completely different environment, and he's he's studying to be a sports nutritionist and and I think I think that's probably the one of the biggest impacts that I've had for for an individual per se in terms of someone that I sort of look at and think. Your, your, I think role models are always sort of growing so they can change along the way. And my biggest role model at the moment is a guy called Lauren, uh, Lauren Bannock, who's the director of the, the course that I did for the IOPN. He's, he's opened his own course to help other people get into the profession. He works for the, international, the Belgium international football team. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned from swapping and changing jobs and career paths was looking at other people that where they where you want to be and going back through thinking how they've got there LinkedIn is a great sort of field where you can look through what they've done from when they were younger to get to where they are now as like a broad broad view from that so I look at where he is now working for international football teams touching so much research he, he's got so many people from different universities on his course. How has he networked himself to, to get there? And I, I sort of take a page out of his book. And I think network is one of the biggest tools in the sports industry. We come across so many people and first impressions and talking to people like we are now, we're learning about each other and the, the roots that we have to sort of having that confidence to speak to them and what can you gauge from them that will help impact me going forward. So I think that's that's huge for for young people getting into sport. Uh, one of the biggest lessons that I learned that your network, that you, the people that you meet along the way, it might not help you say now, 
someone if I met I met them last week that might not help me this year but in five years time I might find that I come across you and you know my face you know my name and that's going to help me in that that period of time so it's always thinking every every person you touch uh, in in your life in you talk to say for example we're on this podcast together and I know that you're moving to Dubai into wherever whatever field there could be an avenue for a network in in so many different areas in that avenue so it's 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 great to to have that thought process as well Gareth I sort of round uh, a textbook a textbook to unpack I really like the idea of what you were saying about your network and having the ripples of paying it forward and especially the impact that you had on the young man's life uh, as a lecturer of sports science. I liked how that you gave it some credit to your own role model, uh, Lauren Bernock. What I would really like to sort of ask you about when you are talking to people that you want to sort of inspire or uh, persuade, um, especially in your area as a sports nutritionist or a performance sort of nutritionist where sometimes, especially if they're in the general public as your clients or having issues about body image, if they're slightly overweight, how do you form a relationship with these people or how would you communicate with these people so that you can, you know, inspire and persuade? How would you give that advice to yourself or other people? I think for me, I draw on my own experiences. The personal relationship that you have with clients has always got to be professional, but you can always look down and, and you almost give and take, you let them in to elements of your life, whether that was my experience of being overweight and how I overcome that. And that's going to be different for every client of how, where they are at the, at the start of their journey to where they could be going, what their goal could be. Um, and I think it's just being open and discussing and breaking down their journey into sort of bite-sized chunks. So say, for example, I've got a client at the moment who plays water polo. He's in pre-season at the moment, but he's quite a young guy. He's, eight, he's 18 and his journey to where he wants to go is so long that we have to break it down into smaller chunks. So he's got a pre-season, which is eight weeks long. What sort of impact can we have to optimise uh, the journey towards his goal? So if he wants to go and play for USA uh, national team in the Olympics in water polo, we have to look at the steps that we have to take with him to get his his body into the condition would be that of a, a professional water polo player. It's, I think it's being very open with them and saying it's not a sprint. It's very slow. Your body takes time. Every decision that you make, whether it's say like, I think one of the biggest things that we have, we all look like to live life and you can't be so solely fixated on, I need to look this way. I need to, to have this amount of muscle mass to perform this movement or whatever you're doing. Uh, we have the weekend. You need to be able to enjoy life as well as having that balance and being able to say, I can do that. And it's not going to adversely affect the end goal. It might make the journey a little bit longer, but it's being able to make those better choices. It's looking at the menu prior and getting into a habit of doing that and thinking, what would I enjoy? I want to have that. I know that that's the amount of calories that I can have for that meal. How can I manage the rest of my day to fit that in? So instead of, I can't have that food because it's going to be too bad. I can't have that dessert. It's, it's looking forward and working backwards from, from that moment. And I think the biggest barrier that, that I've faced with clients is them wanting to have the end result now. And it's, and it's, it's like, like I just said, it's, it's breaking that down into smaller chunks. And everyone wants to see progress really quickly, but we need to, to understand that it's, it's going to take a set amount of time to get to where we want to be. Gareth. Um, a lot of golden nuggets what you've just given us and I'm just going to um, go over a few of them because at the end of this I would like to ask you what would be your advice okay what advice would you give yourself so I'll go through some of the things that you've already said and maybe you could hit on some of them again maybe going a little bit deeper 
or you could say this is the sort of advice I wish I had as a kid. Okay, so just from the last paragraph, I mean the last conversation, some of the nuggets that you've just given us. Looking forward, working backwards. Every interaction is unique. Goal setting with bite-sized chunks. Enjoy life with live, live with balance. Better choices, better life. Out of those sort of nuggets that you've given us or anything else that you think of, what sort of advice would you give you, uh, a younger self? I think the, in terms of nutrition or in terms of career pathway? Up to you, man. You, you've been an encyclopedia of knowledge. I don't want to uh, confine you to any one area. Um, I think in terms of career pathway and what you want to do, I'd probably say look forwards uh, and plan backwards. But in, with that in mind, don't get fixated on what you chose and look forward for. Because with every interaction and everything that you learn, your, your interests change. And I, I think not being scared to, to try, or try and do different things because you'll learn something in that job role or in that experience that will help you be a better nutritionist, a better athlete or a better PE teacher or whatever you, you want to go down. And I think for me and my experience, my my route of what I took from going to youth youth work to PE teacher to, to being a sports nutritionist, because I had those experiences with young people from different backgrounds, from a so less advantaged background in youth work to kids in a, an educational setting, uh, I sort of learned how to interact with people from different backgrounds and what their stories were. So when I got to being a nutritionist, different clients come from out of anywhere and their, their stories I can resonate with because I've had an, an experience with someone similar from various different lines of work. So I think every, uh, every experience that you have, you need to cherish and sort of look at that and, and think, what am I... Not probably not in the moment. You're not going to think, what what am I learning in this moment? But you'll be able to to think backwards and think, actually, I've I've done this before because I've had that experience in there. Um, and in terms of nutrition wise, not getting fixated on the end goal, being fixated on that end goal can actually hinder yourself getting to it. So breaking it up and having smaller targets allows you to to get there a lot better than having say. I don't know, Ronnie Coleman has a picture on your, on your wall thinking, I want to get to that, but I'm so far away from that. And it's, it's getting there in a smaller, a smaller path. Uh, listen, I, I'm going to jump in and completely agree with Tavis there. The amount of golden nuggets that you've given us has been massive. And I, I wrote down a lot that, that Tavis read off. I wrote down management was a big word that I wrote down. Um, I'm a foodie like you, so sometimes I, I know I'm going to listen back to this podcast and go, what can I do to make myself a bit healthier? Or I'm going to try and tap you up, Gareth, after this uh, podcast is done <laughs> so you can give me some individual help. Um, just uh, let's say, for example, there's a listener here uh, who you can answer this question in, in either way, uh, Gareth. You can answer it in both ways or, or you can choose. Um, but if there was a listener um, who's listening to this, either or either – sitting there going, I really could do with someone's help, like Gareth, from an individual healthy point of view. But I'm scared of making that initial move, that first move to making myself make better choices. Or as a listener here listening and going, okay, this is really interesting for me, but I have absolutely no idea where I would even start to move into a profession like this. What, why, what advice would you give? So either one of those questions you can answer or you can have a guy answering both. It's completely up to you. Uh, so advice I'd give someone younger who wants to get in the profession and has no idea is I think speci specifically, say, young people who may be going to university, going through like their choices of what they want to do. There's so much life that you have in front of you that you can change it. So I did a degree in sports performance and went down the route of being a performance analyst. And I did that at university and I didn't like it. 
it wasn't for me. So I quickly shut that down, tried something else. Uh, and I did strength and conditioning. I look, looked into that. I thought, actually, to do that job, you need to get this, this, and this. And I don't want to go down that route for, for what it is. And I wasn't as passionate as that as what I am now. But I think someone looking to get into it is, is you. Un- I think most people that are getting into sport understand that they like sport. So choose something at university that you you like and you enjoy and don't be scared to get it wrong. So I know quite a few people that have gone to university, they've done sports coaching or sports science and they've done the, the, the three year degree. Got to the end of it and thought, actually, what I've gained nothing from, from doing that. I still don't know what I want to do. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things is still accepting that it's okay not to know. And I'm, I'm 29 and I've got to a position where 27, 28, I was still figuring out what I wanted to do. So being able to, to know that is, is probably a big step. So doing, doing some a broad degree, I think, uh, at university, and then you can specialise in something later, whether it's doing a postgraduate, a master's, or something, something else. So that's, that's probably in, in terms of that. Uh, someone who wants to get involved in bettering themselves in a health-wise sort of avenue is if you just look at social media if you if you search on social media say instagram or something like that twitter and you you search hashtags of nutrition or diet you'll come up with loads of different pages and you'll probably have to scroll through various ones that are probably rubbish but it's looking at people and there'll be like nutritionists there'll be performance coaches there'll be online coaches personal trainers that will advertise themselves on social media because it's the biggest platform for us to to get out and and have that sort of footprint on on the world so picking someone that you you sort of look into and get along with and and that takes a conversation and i think the biggest step is having a conversation with loads of people and being able to say right you're not you don't work you don't what you don't fit my my goal you don't fit my personality i need someone else that can help me and i've had clients where me and them have had different personalities and it's okay to say to someone or someone's coming to me and saying i've been your client for six months love the journey that i've been on but the step that i want to take next i feel like i'd be better going with someone else and that's fine and i think that's the biggest thing is not looking at that as, oh, I'm losing a client. It's it's looking at it in a more positive way of, I've helped that client get to that step where they want to search for that next step upwards, whether they want to specialise in, say, bodybuilding or being a model or just going down like a diabetes route. So some clients will have diabetes and I'm not a specialist in diabetes and you, and they want to look for someone that is a specialist for diabetes and and then you've helped them get into it and i think having those conversations with with people on instagram or just having a conversation with your personal trainer in the gym that's the foundation of of a network in a way where you can work with them and then you can learn about what they're doing for you and if it fits great keep working with them if it doesn't fit you've had that initial confidence to be able to speak to them. You can apply that to speaking to someone else and getting that next view of what your next part of the journey is going to be like. Oh, that's great, Gareth. And I really appreciate your answers there. Cause I think there's certain listeners out there that will be obviously inspired by your story about how you became involved in sports nutrition. Uh, and there'll be certainly some that may even look at that and go, not only am I interested in that, but when I look back and think about how I can be a healthier person in general, it's overcoming that barrier, isn't it? It's that initial, where do I go first? You know, and you've talked there about the importance of communication and having conversations with people that you trust and people that you can rely on, having differences of opinion. Um, and then obviously, like you said, using certain platforms like the social media in, 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 a positive, in a positive way. So listen, we've really enjoyed having you on as a guest uh, and we really thank you for your time. We always like to finish with, uh, an interesting question. So uh, I'm going to ask my first and then I'll pass over to my good friend Tavis to ask his. Um, you've given us loads of these. So 
I wonder if there's one that you are going to steal from one you've already said, which is your favourite one, or whether there's an overarching one that perhaps isn't it is supersedes the others. But um, kind of mine is always what's what's your mantra, Gav? What's your your one phrase or saying or or kind of golden nugget, if you like, that you're always trying to live your life by? I think I've read I've read it recently actually in a different different light, but fear of failure is failure itself. So being scared to fail at something or try something and failing at it is is failure in itself because you're not willing to take that step into to doing it. So I think the biggest thing that I've learned is however scared or or worried you are about something not working or investment into something, being okay to fail at it and and looking at that as a lesson more than a oh I've done really wrong there. Within that, I think you look at a lot of successful people. There's no chance that they've gone from nothing to being so successful without having failures. And the biggest thing is they've they've taken that route. I think some of the, the biggest people, like some of the richest people, have, had, have lost millions or thousands of pounds trying something first to get to where they are now. So I know Warren Buffett, who is is massive, he, he lost millions of pounds when he was, say, 19, 20. I think he had an investment with his dad, lost all of his dad's money, and then made himself successful on the back of that failure. So failure is a, is a lesson to learn from. Yeah, once again, some more really good life advice for everybody that's listening. Uh, a fear of failure is a, a failure in itself, if I understand that one. I also have a, uh, a short question. What is a strange habit that you have that has helped you get to where you are now? Um, it's, it, it, I don't know if it's a habit. It's more of a... So within my friendship group, I, I always find myself, especially on LinkedIn, you see so many people go through it and you see so many careers and so many jobs go up. And I, I look at the, the jobs uh, and I, I look at... Not for, not for myself, but I'm looking at, say, I've got a friend back in the UK who's, who's looking to, to progress himself. And I, I look through these jobs and I'm like, that sounds great. I'm going to send it to him. And I find myself getting in the habit of being a recruiter for all my mates uh, and sending, sending them loads of jobs, which they either are, are completely not interested in or, or it helps them. But what it, it helps me, because I look at these jobs and I, and, I, and I think whatever thing you look at, you're always comparing yourself to it and think, Oh, would I be interested in that? Absolutely not. But you you look at things and you and you, you sort of learn. There's so many different avenues into things like marketing and de- sports development, and there's so many different avenues that you can do, do, go down. And uh, yeah, I think that's probably one a bad habit because you you probably shouldn't be looking at jobs every day or all the time. And I'm not doing it, and it's not suggesting that I want to move every, all the time, all the time. But um, but I think that's something I've quite got in a habit of doing just because I'm interested in, in those loads of different roles and where, where they can go to. Uh, Gareth, I think you must be very confusing for the LinkedIn algorithms with the job search. <laughs> you must be getting some very, very random things. Um, I love the way that you're making impact throughout your life, even on a, a social setting, helping your friends by uh, sending out job notices, even if it's, not called for but I really enjoy like from your journey going from uh, a youth worker to a personal trainer to your sports science lecturer and now as a sports nutritionist I've really enjoyed how analytical you've been in different seasons of your life and it seems that you have a very firm understanding of what each interaction needs as you go forward and it's been great hearing that advice that you've been sharing um yeah so you might be a sports nutritionist today but today you also fed our minds um so thanks very much for your time welcome and thank you for having me i think it's been great to to talk on the podcast and give my story about where where i've gone and what i've done and hope it helps people Thank you so much, Gareth. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope all the listeners have really enjoyed listening to Gareth's story today. I know I have, and I know Talas has as well. And we'll see you soon for a new episode of Sporting Directions.